delighted to be here this afternoon. <clears throat> My throat is laboring a bit. Um, uh, we traveled and we reached here yesterday night and we have been going on uh, since this morning. We have had already two meetings and this is a third meeting. Um, so a little, just about three hours of sleep yesterday night and that's where we are. Before that we traveled, <clears throat> we were in Houston. I just want the church to know that in Houston, we had a board meeting, and our dear Christopher was also part of the board. People flew in from a few places, and today I'm happy to announce that our ministry, Tammy and Caritas, both have received the 501C registration in the United States, where we are fully a charity receipable organization, tax receipable or receipted organization. And that was truly God. You know, we have been seeking the same four characters in Canada. It has not come through as yet, but for some reason the U.S. has, you know, truly God has gone ahead and done things for us. Can I do something? Uh, because this is very special. Can I do this? Is anybody that believes that there is a tremendous purpose of God over your lives? And this 2020 could be something significant. Okay. Now, may I give you, I'm not saying everybody should do this. May I give at least few people the opportunity to get closer? You know, this is a moment where I want to connect with each one of you. You know, worship team, if you're here, if some of you at least can move forward, if you're married, come with your wives. If you can. Because I'm going to talk to future leaders, anybody, not just worship team, I'm just calling them because they're on the platform. Anybody that feels that the next year is significant for my life, could you do some movement to show that you really believe it. Some movement. Oh, yes. Who said that? Oh, yes. <laughs> you can move. Take some chairs. Pull the chairs. No problem. No problem. I, I'm okay to... It's, it's a different kind of a message. See, I feel more at, at home now. Very comfortable. Is anybody disfranchised from here? Move at the back. Just move. Get closer. Amen. I, I don't know how to even, what do you call, phrase or frame this message. But I know absolutely this is from God. No sh doubt whatsoever. So how many of you believe each one that came today have come because God brought you to this place for such a time as this. Come on, church. Can I employ your appreciation for a fellow minister of mine who has now joined us? Put your hands together for Prophet Bernard Blessing. Amen. Such a joy. This is very significant. I believe this is a moment in itself highly strategic for the future. Maybe some of you were born for this moment. All what you went through in your life was probably for this moment. And I'll tell you why it's important. Okay? Now I, I'm able to see you closer. And I, I, I feel very good about it. Can I start with a story? Because only then you'll understand. And today it's got a teaching or a prophetic teaching in it. That means it's got prophetic word. Every word is highly prophetic. But also there's a teaching element too. So you can jot down if you want to. It's a good thing to do. Because you're going to take this with you. 
So let me share this story. And then you'll understand the importance of this message. About two years back, I had a very unusual encounter with God. And that encounter was unusual because the manner in which the encounter took place was different. You know, by God's grace, I have had passages, messages appearing in dreams. And that's one of the areas that God has blessed me. In the last few months, I'm getting another special blessing. I get scripture and the passage coming together, which I've never read before or never saw before. And let's say it comes from the Old Testament or the New Testament, wherever it comes from, it'll be the same message. So that means the Holy Spirit is putting it together. But what I saw in that particular day was different. I got a word from God and all of a sudden, while I'm getting the word, I don't know if it was a trance, I'm seeing a vision. And the vision was distinct, very distinct. And the vision was this, I'm entering, you know, I'm entering the Sikh community. How many of you know Sikh? The Punjabi community. And very highly influential people. And, and, and the Lord told me, with that he gave me a message that there's going to be a new face, a new entrance, like never before. And I'm here to announce, we are on the cusp of that grand entrance. And I'll tell you why. So two years back I had this and God gave me the message that I'm about to preach to you. Maybe the only other place that I'm preaching it for probably the second time in my life. After I got that word. And the Lord asked me to release it here. So two, two and a half years it has been sitting on my heart. Today I'm releasing it. Never released it anywhere else for this place, for our ministry. So about a month back, this is a story. About a month back, this particular message came back to me. The message that I'm about to preach today. It came back to me with such force. But then I started to get kind of disappointed. I said, God, you told me about a Sikh community, a Sikh big meeting that I'm entering as a sign of it. But nothing came out of it. You had given me a vision along with this word, but nothing happened. That was on a Friday or a Thursday. On Sunday, unbeknownst to me, there was a, a preacher, pastor from the Alliance Church, who is a founder of the first Filipino Alliance Church in Edmonton. Highly qualified, I think he's got two doctorates. And I didn't know this. And that morning, God gave me a message called the rock that followed. And the Lord touched this man. And he asked me, can we go for a coffee or something? So I met with him. And to make this long story short, there was going to be a global summit for the Sikh community that was going to happen at Edmonton under the leadership of almost 10 to 15 ministries, including Billy Graham and some of the top ministries coming together. And this man is the one directing it, organizing it. So I met with him and at the coffee place at the time we were having this coffee, he said, everything is arranged as the second in command of Billy Graham ministry and others who are ministering there. But this is for the whole globe. The whole globe. Sikhs are coming from all over the world. Some of the top business people and everybody. And finally he says, you know what? I want to create a situation for you to come in and speak to some of the key leaders. What the Lord had told me along with the word that I'm going to preach, you know, is about at that point of time coming to fulfillment. So, anyways, you know, I don't want to talk about the meeting. God created that space for me in that meeting. There were some key people from around the world and I met with them. They didn't even know me. Believe me, they didn't even know me. So when they came and said, they, I saw some of them looking at each other and saying, what, what are we doing here? What's going to happen here? 
So they didn't even know what they were getting into. So I had to introduce myself and I said who I was and then started to speak a few words and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I can say this for the glory of God, 20 minutes, I was just talking at a table, not even big oomph preaching. The power of God comes down and almost every leader seated there started to sob. It was crying like a baby. God started to move. But here is what I wanted to know. The enemy attacked immediately. You know, that meeting, there was a special friend of mine. I can't call him friend until recently. He's heading a chartered accountant organization and he's known among the Christian churches in Edmonton. You know, he's blessed the Christian churches and I know this man by, not even by his face, by his name and what he has done. Few times we have got some extra money that came to a church and we didn't know where it came from and finally we traced it back to this man. I got my first iPad put at the door of our church. I didn't even know who put it there. For many years I didn't know but later came to realize that this was a man. And finally, you know, God sends this man. So I said to myself, God, when I have a business, come on, somebody say yes. When God gives me money, I need a good, you know, uh, uh, accountant or chart accountant who will handle things for me. I wish I get some ideas from this man. I don't even know this man. But what are the odds? In two weeks time, after I had the desire or after I spoke to somebody, I get a call coming from my, you know, secretary or, or coordinator, Molly Ante. She said, you know, this particular accountant that I was talking about is flying all the way from another state to come and just meet with me. So I met with him, it was a 45 minutes meeting, and this is what he told me. I read that to Pastor Elias recently in the mail, the, one, the thing that he said, he told me, you don't know me, but I know you. And, the, and he said to me, for two years, I have done, you know, auditing, litigation, I'm, I've got into forensic auditing and all that. He's a big guy in that area. But he said, for two years, I'm doing a new course called Global Accounting or, you know, beyond the borders. And I'm doing it only to help you. The Lord told me to, the Lord told me to tell you, the Lord told me to tell you that the reason I did this course for two years is the Lord told me your ministry is going to become global. Across the globe. And, and the, I want to be able to help you for what you call cross-border auditing, cross-border accounting. Let me tell you, when God is about to do something, He's putting the people right there. This is significant. Somebody lift up your voice and say, what is about to happen is significant. How is about to happen is significant. So I, I shared this with Pastor Elias. And this man is the main person who is sponsoring this Seek Global Summit. So he became very close to me. His name is David. Became very close to me. And, and in that meeting, we, and we are talking about going forward, very much connected to the move of God. Together, we want to be involved in it. And that was on a, th on, on a Friday, uh, Wednesday. I went and spoke. And Thursday, I get this phone call. And I looked, it's coming from the place where the conference is happening. So I immediately, I thought, you know what? Maybe they want to talk about conference. I will talk to them later. But something told me, pick up the call. I picked up the call, and there was somebody on the other end literally crying, frantic call, this David that God had brought into my life to connect to the next move is now fallen. He says, he's dead. They said the pulse is not there. The ambulance is on its way, but he's gone. They're trying to bring him back to life. They're doing all kinds of things. You know, it's a few minutes now. Nothing has happened. He's gone. You know, I didn't know what to do. Here, the Lord had told me about a significant move that's going to happen. And this man was somehow connected to it. And the enemy, I said, God, what is happening? One after the other, death happening. I can't take it. Lord, I said, I don't even know what to pray. But I don't want the enemy to have another victory. This will not be a victory. So I don't even know what to pray for. But I said, if there is one person who can handle death, it's my Jesus. 
Because anybody who has got the power over death, that's my Jesus. And anybody believes that if there's anybody that has got the power of death, it's Jesus Christ. If you believe that, can you shout hallelujah in the house? So I, I fell on my face in my room. I prayed. People are praying. This is happening right in the conference area. The Sikh conference that God had spoken to me. So we went back to the, we rushed to the hospital. We don't even know where he is. We couldn't find him. You know, the doctors are very sketchy you know, in, in the way they give the information. We don't even know. The only information we have is it was a massive heart attack. Massive heart attack. And then, you know what? Those, the family members, they don't even have to pray. So I stood up and said, we make, bring this matter to God. From this moment, it is a power of resurrection. So somebody sent me a text saying, should we pray for healing or for resurrection? I don't, know, I don't even know. I said, if it's resurrection, we, we have come to the right place. Because Jesus Christ is a resurrection. <laughs> he was on a medically induced coma for two days. They, they, nothing. They won't talk. Put him in coma. And let me tell you, we don't even know what to do. But I want you to know, people of God, we didn't give up. And today I'm going to announce, this message is coming after victory. You know, there are people from medical profession here. I've got doctors in our midst. And while I was sharing the story, you know, people said, showed me with action, dead. Because they found out on the cardio report that his brain received nothing, no blood supply for 14 minutes. They say if it's three minutes, the brain goes into death. After six minutes, its brain you know, almost literally dead, clinically dead, or even can become a vegetable. 14 minutes. Nothing. But I'm happy to say, last Sunday, he was in our church. He was in our church. But what is so interesting, last Sunday... At about 1.30 in the afternoon, I'm sitting in my room. The Lord gives me a message, which is not even a message. Matthew 1, 17, the 14 generation, 14 from here, 14 from there. It's not a message as, as such. But interestingly, I didn't know he was going to come. I didn't know he was going to come. I get this word. The Lord tells me to speak on it. I come to a church and I stood up to preach. And then you can see this on YouTube. I pulled him out from the crowd. I didn't even know he was going to be there. Nobody knew. He didn't even know that he was going to come. But let me tell you, when he came out of coma, the word that God had given to him was Matthew 1.17. And the day is coming to the church. The Lord is giving me Matthew 1.17. Come on, church. So what I'm trying to say, this message that I'm going to preach today came after a battle. And the Lord told me, since it came after a battle, let more people receive it. So are you ready to enter into 2020? With a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. Can some... Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Something beautiful is going to happen. Pastor, we are celebrating victory today. The devil didn't want me to speak this. He wanted to take every people connected to this. But I'm standing here to declare the devil has lost his plan. Amen. We are here. The church is here. Prophet Bernard Blessing is here. The people that God has brought are here because we are entering into 2020 with a shout of victory, with a great expectation. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Yes! It's going to happen today. So this is a prophetic word. So you might wonder, what is the word that God gave me? I'm releasing it for the first time outside. It's very important. I'm going to repeat some words that God gave me when he gave me this word. So I might look at my notes. Exact words. Because it's going to be powerful. Are you ready? Okay, before that, I want to give a small information. To, I just got it on my WhatsApp. Now, Pastor Moni is a witness to this. Moni passes here. When I was growing up in Bangalore, I, I can say I had them. Because he's no more as close to me as, as it used, he used to be. A very close friend. Very close friend. Meaning, Pastor Moni knows who I'm talking about. We traveled together. We went on bike together. We studied together. We, you know, the first time he preached was in my house. I was the first preacher. And then he came along. 
You know, every place that I went for ministry, we traveled together. So in those days, we didn't have anything to look forward to. So in fasting prayer in our church, he will stand up and make this big declaration. I will be the pastor of the biggest church in Bangalore. He doesn't even have a church for crying out loud. And then I will say, you know, what am I going to say? So I'll stand up and say, I will have a global ministry. <laughs> There's nothing because once he took over Bangalore, what am I going to do? I, I can't go to Kerala. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to have a global ministry, international ministry. But we used to laugh after making those statements. Because it was, it was just a statement. <laughs> but God recorded that in heaven. Come on, hallelujah. You know, today I saw a WhatsApp message. He bought a land in Bangalore for 100 crore rupees. 15 million US dollars. And building one of the biggest churches. 100 crore. And I said, God, he used to make a statement. I'm going to be the biggest pastor when he had nothing. And I used to say global ministry. And I'm glad I'm standing here. We are part of a global ministry. Let me tell you, today when God says something, when you hear a word, do something. Come on, say something. In spite of your situation, I want you to make this a faith conference this afternoon. If you're willing for that, put your hands together. Give the Lord a shout of praise. And I'll make some statements that's going to change your life forever. Are you ready? Make some big statements. Oh, get ready, get ready. So the message that I want to bring before you is titled, Manner of Entrance. So, manner of Entrance. Everybody say the manner of entrance. Say it loudly. The manner of entrance. You know, today's message is a clarion call for ministry which will bear future implication if received by faith. This is what I wrote when I made this message, preached this message the first time two years back. What I'm about to deliver came first as a word and then as an image. And the image that I just shared with you. It's just described as a blueprint of future events. This word, man of entrance, appears in the original text three or four times. Only three times or four times. It's all found in the book of 1 Thessalonians. And chapter 1, verse number 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering. Look at the word. What manner of entry or entering in we had unto you. Every, everybody say manner of entering. They themselves show as what manner of entering we had unto you. How you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Chapter 2 verse number 1. For you yourselves brethren, 2-1. Know our entrance in unto you. Everybody say entrance. The first word I want you to know, entrance in this context means to enter a place, season, particular phase of your life. Manner, on the other hand, denotes a particular style, uniqueness or characteristic. As God's people, even the manner in which we enter a particular season of place should have distinct value. Let me tell you, it's not just entering, even the manner we enter must be distinct. Are you ready today? Because two things are going to happen. Some of you are going to enter into a new season. A new phase in your life. A new, you know, entrance that you never saw in your life for many years. It's about to come. But I'm here to declare it's not just the entrance. Even the manner in which you're entering will be distinctly led by the Holy Spirit, will be something of a characteristic. You will know this is how I entered. This is a new manner in which you're entering. If you believe that you're going to have both an entrance and a manner of entrance, can you give a Lord an agreement in the house of a Lord? A manner of entrance. Somebody say manner of entrance. So can I start the prophecy over here? 2020, for some of you, is going to be the new entrance. 
Oh, you didn't hear me. I said new entrance into a phase in your life, into a season of your life, into a new beginning of your life. If you believe it's a word for you, I want you to receive it and reciprocate it with a certain response in your heart in the name of Jesus. But the Lord is telling me it will be a distinctive entrance, not like last year, not like the previous year. This will be a distinctive entrance. It will be a new manner of entrance. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to get a new manner of entrance into a new season. Come on, say it. New manner. Come on. Somebody, I'm going to ask Prophet Bernard to be the cheerleader for my life today. So, Prophet, if you get a chance, speak it over me as well. I'm going to, Tammy is going to enter a new phase. But this time, it's going to be a new manner of entrance. Something that we have never seen ever in our ministry. That's the way we are going to enter into this new season. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Get ready to enter into a new season with a descriptive word, manner of entrance. Oh, oh, I receive it. So what was the, let me tell you what was the blessing of this entrance. First blessing, are you ready? Come on, can I See your faces now. How many of you really believe that God, I am sure, because this word came with an image and that image got fulfilled a few days back and with an attack that God resurrected back. So I can stand here and release it. And the Lord told me this afternoon, I so I'm here, I'm taking it for our ministry. So can I declare today, I want some of you to agree with me, you might be knocking at the door of entrances. You might have come closer to entrances. But this time you're not coming closer. You're entering into the season. You're entering into the faith. Oh. You're entering into what God has called you. If somebody believes that, can you make a gesture this afternoon? Can you make a noise in the house of a Lord? Can somebody show that you are serious about this entrance in the name of Jesus? Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. Can you, sh you know, I, I preach in Kerala, I preach in Africa, but those people will say, that word is for me, that word is for me. Can you receive that? 2020, you're not just getting closer to the door, you're entering the door that's going to open a new season in your life. The blessings of, so first of all, before I say the blessing, how many of you really believe when God says he's taking you into a new season, you're going to enter into a new season with a distinctive manner. Not like the previous time. It is a unique entrance. If you believe that, can you show yourself up right now in the name? Oh, somebody help me. Somebody help me. Oh, this is big. This is big. This you're going to remember. This you're going to be absolutely talking about in the days to come. So, since you have agreed the preamble to this message, can I give you the blessing? Somebody say, I'm ready for the blessings, Pastor. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to make you custodian of this message. So tomorrow you have to give it back to me. So first blessing, can I speak to you? This entrance will not be in vain. Second Thess First Thessalonians 2, 1. For yourself, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. The word vain is, you know, empty. The word is kine in the Greek, commonly defined as empty, you know, fruitless, not, no success, failing in its purpose, failure, accomplishing what it was designed for. And the Lord is telling me to tell you, this time your entrance will not be em it will, it will not empty, not fruitless, not without success, did not fail its purpose, nor a failure, and will accomplish what it was designed for. And I am here to say, I declare over you, every wastage of time, every vain entrance, is now cancelled in the name of Jesus. 
Oh, come on, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Somebody say, that's a word for me. That means no wastage of time. This entrance will be fruitful. This entrance will be successful. This entrance will take you to a place where God wants to take you. This entrance will be an accomplishment in your life. Can somebody who believes in the name of Jesus, that when God says it will happen, can you shout a hallelujah in the house? Hey. Tell your neighbor and say, no, nothing vain in this. Nothing vain. No vain. No wastage of time. It will bear fruit. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 2020, your entrance will be a fruitful entrance. Ooh. Ooh. Can you believe it for Africa? For your nation? It will be a fruitful entrance. Some of you receive financially, it will be a fruitful entrance. Spiritually, a fruitful entrance. Somebody say, yes in the house of the Lord. Get ready, get ready. So number two, can you receive the next blessing? Number two, the next blessing of this entrance. Amen. Can you receive it please? Oh, this is very interesting. Despite the anxiety you felt, you will be fruitful. In spite of feeling a sense of anxiety, the Lord says, rest. It'll go, it'll be go, it's going to be good. Because 1 Thessalonians 3, 5, Paul says, when I entered, I was worried. For this cause, when I could no longer, long, long, no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. Lest by some means a tempter have tempted you. And a labor would be in vain. Sometimes the past in your life will project. The present and the future. The enemy says last time you, had, you were very excited what came out of it. You tried this. You thought that prophecy is going to be fulfilled. That will be the new season in your life. But you went back and the enemy attacked again. So that sense of anxiety is still ruling you. You're not even able to receive the word because of the past experience. But I'm here to say this time it won't be in vain in the name of Jesus. Can, can I get somebody who can believe that? I'm, I'm talking to people who felt disappointed. You thought your season had come. You thought your entrance had come. But somehow it did not pursue. It did not you know become continuous it was not consistent but I'm here to say this time there's going to be a result that's going to stay forever and forever and forever somebody shout hallelujah in the house why is Paul you know sad or disappointed because it's the only church only church in his ministry where some people say he didn't even stay for one week you start a church and you're not even able to be there in one, for one week. Some people say more, not even one month. It could be either one week or two weeks. That's all where, how, much, how many weeks he stayed there. Because people came and pushed him out. He was thrown from that place. Mm -hmm. And his heart is now disturbed. So he sends Timothy and said, go and find out if the church is there. If our labor was really fruitful or was in vain. And Timothy comes with, with, with this Yahoo kind of a word. And he said, you know what, Pastor Paul, I want you to know, even though you were not there, Pastor Holy Spirit was there. Come on. Deceive it. The Lord is telling me to tell you all your problems that came in your life, God was preparing you for the next season of your life. If you believe that, shout hallelujah in the on can i say the third blessing you should show some more excitement can i say the third blessing over here oh hallelujah this is a prophetic word with teaching can i say this are you ready for this people in your life people even overseas people in other parts of the world will testify about this entrance Look what Paul says, 1 Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9. From you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, 
but also in every place your faith to god word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything paul says i don't want to i don't have to come and introduce myself the miracle is introducing itself come on how many if you want a ministry a new entrance where your miracle will introduce you your miracle will tell who you are you don't need have to speak about it people are going to talk about it i mean churches are going to talk about it even people in other countries are going to talk about it. that's the kind of entrance some of you are going to have if you believe that shout hallelujah in the oh, get ready get ready get ready get ready pastors can i share briefly in about 1 minute how this is important to me my life was always the lord gave me a brief or kind of an overall view of my life at the age of 12 i started preaching that was my first season very powerful prophetic healing casting out of demons and also i had the ministry of leading people into the infilling of the holy ghost by god's grace i can announce today probably 10000s have received the baptism in the holy ghost that was from age 12 to 16 but at the age of 16 i had an encounter with the lord that is the second phase of my life for the first time people started to fall down and the lord used me as a first person for that ministry especially in the parts of india and in, in the middle east pastelius might know the persecution was enormous pastor moni knows it magazines started write about it there was great criticism my cartoon started to appear i was stopped right in the middle of a road by hostile crowd while i'm preaching people so called prophets will rise up right when i'm preaching and declare this is the antichrist that the bible had to- spoken about that's how i was attacked at every level and let me tell you it was so hard but if you remember the power that was manifested in those days cannot be compared to anything that you see on tv now walking on the street people will be thrown by the power of god on the main road let me tell you i'm here to declare wait wait let me tell the story something mighty is happening i tell you the lord of power is coming back into our midst can i get a shout of hallelujah in the when i came as a teenager to the middle east i came with that power some of you might you know those days i used to go to hostile churches where elders are against me i will not even touch them believe me i would not touch them i will just give my pen to some of them and walk away and before you know i can hear a thud sound on the floor the man is holding the pen as as is flying and is gone up from that place and is gone to another place and is down on the floor because of the power of god penetrating through the pen come on hallelujah i have seen such power where people are literally lifted off and flying under the power of god not even touching let me tell you my god is a god of power So recently Pastor Dale and myself we were in in Beherin and and a brother came and we were chatting outside the meeting place and he said now I remember you you are the one who came as a teenager many many years ago and caused such riot in our place <laughs> because the pastor of that place you know you know that pastor you know he <laughs> he was a businessman a general manager of a company very much educated and he heard about this is so much this churches will get divided families will get divided some will support me some will turn against me most of the time the wise will turn against you know what in even in bangalore the church was divided you know my secretary was against me the church secretary's wife was for me the trust me his wife was for me and apparently the trust is my father in law now and i still remember he was such a what do you call a, a, a critique of this because he comes from a scientific persuasion he was working for the aeronautic development establishment everything has to be scientific he said yes his people are mesmerized or something is happening you know this is all psychology and all that all kinds of but what psychology i'm not even touching but you know what after that happens creative miracles happen come on get ready get ready why am i saying this because you have to say the history before you speak about the future there's a history to this move 
And I remember one day I'm preaching in a, in a place where people believe in this move and there's mighty miracles happening. And, and people are coming from different parts of India for healing and deliverance. And all of a sudden I get a, a letter, a small letter while I'm standing there. Your John uncle, his name is, Treasure's name is John uncle. We used to call him John, a well-respected elderly man, elder of a church. He is now coming to this meeting tonight. He's been fasting for the last few days. And today he's making a decision whether to forever turn against it or if it's from God to receive it. I tell you, I was under pressure. Come on. I was so much under pressure because how can you make a man move when he's not interested to move? He's like a mountain with a lot of rational thinking and all that. But I remember that night he stood there. He was, he's a tall person, a small child. And I pointed my finger at him. I tell you, we all saw what we saw that day. It was not just he fell down. The power of God came like an electric current. And he started to spin like a top. And he spun, 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 spun. And we knew his, his, the, the, the spinning is coming to a point. He's going to be elevated from the floor. He started lifting. You know what? The helicopter before it lifts up. You have got those fans rotating. He started to rotate. And then he got lifted up. And before you know, he landed in the next room. Come on. Hallelujah. Even after landing, he's still spinning. Hallelujah. That was a whirlwind from the Lord. Let me tell you, in, in the Gulf countries, are going to see the power of God. God, can somebody, that was at the age of 16, 16, oh, I've seen things in my life, believe me, which can be put into, I myself was, was taken out of the body, under those anointing, powerful anointing, come on, somebody is saying, do it again, and tomorrow my message will be, do it again, <laughs> testimony. So that was at the end, till I was at the middle of it, I came to this place. And some of you might remember those days. I had preaching in the, in the, in the hall, which is Trinity Hall, Pastor Dale, Dale, Dale Kumar. Dale Kumar, Dale Kumar used to organize my meetings. I used to be an evangelist in Dubai. That main hall was full, Trinity Hall, and I used to preach there. You know, deliverance 90, deliverance 97, mighty power. People will enter, they'll throw. You know what? They just have to walk. They'll be thrown by the power of God. But then the next phase happens. This was apostolic. I meet a man in Abu Dhabi, just a conversation. And the next phase of our ministry begins where church planting is happening. Pastors are coming out. See, let me tell you, even if you look at the whole book of Acts, there was a season for the fire and the wind. And then there was a season where the first one is a movement. If, if you want to know what a movement is, you'll keep on hearing the word spread, spread, spread. You know, this word spread. But then, even the people went out because they were scattered. It was not organized. Scattered. That comes out of a movement. And when I was talking to this Bahrain brother, you know, the reason I, told, I, I missed the pastor's story. Oh, the pastor had told me at that point of time, he was going for a conference, said, there's a meeting, but see that nobody will fall. Because I don't want to face critics. It'll be a huge issue if somebody falls under my, in, our, in my church, under my care. I said, I, I don't know what to say to that. Let the Lord guide. Because how can I say what's going to happen? The next night meeting, the next night meeting, the first person to fall, I believe, was his wife. <laughs> and then his kids and his elders. When he came back from the conference, the church is not the church he left. Everybody's speaking in tongues and drunk and hallelujah. His elders are coming and you know, when they shake hands, they're almost going to fall down. The power of God had hit that place. He was absolutely angry at me. He looked at me and said, I, you, I told you not to do it. But you did not obey my words. You did not. You caused such problem for me. And he told me, looked at me and said, tonight is a conference, but I want you to know you can preach, you can heal the sick, cast out demons, people, lead people to the infilling of the Holy Ghost, but nobody will fall. I said, Pastor, you preach. Because I can't promise you. Come on, hallelujah. It is becoming intense. But let me tell you, last year, the, it was the 25th fifth year of that church, and I was a main speaker. Come on, hallelujah. I was a main speaker. That was a face. Well, this man, this man in Bahrain, 
Shu can I now I remember you are the one who caused so much trouble so much you know conversation chatter and all kinds of controversy in this place and then he told me something so I said brother I was the first person but now there are thousands who are doing it you know what he told me it is not thousands there's probably hundreds of thousands who have the ministry of slaying in the spirit but somebody had to stop somebody had to take the lead role i'm glad the lord used me to open a new season then comes the apostolic with pastoral ministry in canada so these are some of the faces in my life you know what the lord told me he told me son i'm about to make you enter into a new phase a new season of your life which will be greater than all the seasons that you've seen in the past put together can i hear somebody believe it and today the reason i'm preaching that to you because i don't want to be selfish when i enter i want some of you to enter with me in the name of jesus if you're willing anybody wants to enter can you make some noise in the house of the lord can can this is a season of power season of church growth every season is going to be put together pastor if you believe that shout a hallelujah in the house season season tell somebody i'm entering a new season ha so what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is this 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 listen what i'm trying to say is this so whenever i go to a nation somebody will come and tell me pastor you remember i was the one who got healed in that meeting pastor elias if you travel with me every meeting that i go somebody will come and say he attended that meeting 20 years back 25 years back there'll be a story every place in the world that i go most of place there'll be some testimony and the lord told me this time this new entrance you don't even have to introduce the testimony will introduce you come on somebody receive it somebody receive it can i prophesy over somebody in the days to come when you go to germany somebody will come you remember me i got healed in your ministry <laughs> come on you go to africa somebody will come and say you remember me it was in your meeting that god healed me of cancer come on can i declare somebody you are going to get reports coming out of your entrance if you believe that this entrance will be a supernatural entrance of testimonies if you believe that make a joyful sound in the house hey come on I like that. I like that. Whoever is doing it, I like that. Make that sound. It will be an entrance where people are going to testify about your entrance in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Come on, are you ready? Can you receive it in the name of Jesus? Paul says, wherever I go. Somebody say, wherever. Come on. Wherever I go. there will be somebody who is giving testimony who is witnessing about the entrance i had among you come on hallelujah this is going to be a global entrance in the name of jesus pastor are we receiving it as a ministry yes we are receiving it wherever we go people are going to talk about this entrance come on get ready some of your family members are going to testify some of the things that you've been praying for is going to be answered this will be a testimony entrance where you don't have to tell the story the story will tell itself what happened on that day come on can you receive it in the name of oh come on i'm going to declare it because my spirit is resonating inside of me you know what the lord told me two words are used wherever i go and the greek in you know, a verb is it's a present continuous sense meaning it didn't stop it is continuing wherever i go somebody will testify about this entrance so on the count of 3 i'm releasing this blessing over you wherever you go this testimony will follow you wherever you go people are going to talk about it even after 15 years 20 years even in the next generation people are going to speak about it if you want a testimony 
fill entrance in your life can you make a noise in the house of a lord somebody somebody hey 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 come on tammy is entering that sharja church is entering that your ministry is entering that wherever you go there will be a product of your testimony product of your entrance can you receive it in the name of jesus kuda kabasham fast i can say this our african churches are a product of that entrance come on the entrance the apostolic entrance we had in 2002 or 2001 that is this is a product our edmonton church is a product of it products are coming out and the lord is telling this time it won't be vain can you receive it can you receive it there will be testimonies attached to this entrance not small testimonies humongous testimonies come on huge testimonies are coming out of this entrance if you want such an entrance come on do some action of faith right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus somebody tell your neighbor testimony filled entrance is coming in the name of akabashakam hantala rabaka se huda rakama shante hantale rebeke she huda rakama shante let me tell you after many decades people are still still telling about the move of god the healing that happened the ministry that people came into let me tell you such move is going to happen in tammy in the name of jesus prophet bernard i'm here to declare you are entering that season that phase you have seen the door but god is making you enter but it will be a new manner of entrance in the name of jesus hey get ready get ready get ready can you tell at least two people it's a supernatural entrance come on declare come on say it say it out say it out say it out say it out brother 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 ningo doctor thanle your doctor ministry ku ready aango it's a supernatural entrance not just doc, m- through medicine through laying of hands through prayer mighty miracles are going to happen in the name of jesus can somebody shout a hallelujah it's a- oh those are opening in tamil nadu those are opening in other places can somebody say i receive it in the name of jesus you are entering the most powerful season of your life it's a new season come on somebody receive it by faith in the name so by faith by faith can i declare this wherever you go somebody say yes or you can say it better wherever you go and all the days of your life people will still be talking about it that kind of an entrance if you want that kind of an entrance can you do something outside the box today and receive it by faith in the name of jesus receive it receive it hey Pastor, I have seen some of the most powerful faces in my life, but I'm here for the first time the Lord is asking me to tell you that together we are going to see all those faces put together, but more glorious. There will be the resurrection of dead bodies. I declare there will be the resurrection of dead bodies in the name of Jesus. get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready. get ready some of you are going to have nations given to you nations given to you can you receive this manner of entrance can you say this entrance is not like any other time this entrance is not a common entrance this is a supernatural entrance in the name of jesus if you believe that shout a hallelujah in the 
sit down sit down sit down sit down we may have to stand up again you know i you know next time at least i've been saying this i need some monitors in the front because i'm not using the platform the worshipers the singers get it but not me when i get on the floor it's difficult on my chest because i don't get to hear what i'm speaking but i know god is speaking to you i'm giving out my everything this entrance number 1 it won't be in vain somebody say yes come on do you believe that number 2 despite your anxiety this will bear fruit number 3 people will testify of this entrance can i declare what i prophesied 2 years back in the days to come even those far away and not connected to you will speak of the end, particular entrance you have the word is very specific and i declare with confidence the reports will spread and people will speak about it number 4 Can I say one more word the Lord said? He said in the days to come the reports will not die out become stale or remain in one place they will spread from one region to the next and across the globe Let me ask you would you rather be introduced by name degrees degrees and qualifications or would you like to be known and associated with the move of God that is causing endless ripples of testimony from place one place to the next that's the next move of god instead of title reverend your your report your miracle will be your introduction come on somebody say receive it number let me go to point number 4 people will turn from the idols and embrace the living god Huda ba kasha kanda la raba. Can you read verse number one eight nine nine nine? Verse number nine. Verse number nine. For they them so shows of what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. You know, let me tell you. When you go to east, there are idols. When you go to west, there are not many physical idols like we are as we associate it with. Not that kind of idol. but everywhere idol simply means something that replaces god and west is full of idols come on hallelujah we may not have idols like we have in india but west also have got their idols some for some of them their beauty is idol some of them the exercise is idol for some of them career is idol but let me tell you that's not the issue here my if you ask me any time any night any moment of my life What is the one thing that you're living for? I'll tell it with such confidence. I've only one desire, one desire. Tammy is only a part of it. One desire. I want to make my God known. <laughs> to show that my God is a true living God. Come on, can I declare that over you? Some of your entrance will be this entrance, where people are going to know that there is no God like your God. Come on. People are going to know that your God is above every other gods. People are going to know your God is a miracle working God. People are going to know that your God is the same yesterday, today and forever. If you believe that, can you shout a hallelujah in the How many of you want to make your God know that your God is the only true God? Living God. or oh, this entrance is about that nations are going to hear that cities are going to hear that can i i don't know how, what i'm talking but i sense there are some people seated here will preach before 10000 i release this over your future you will stand before an audience and speak and people are going to run to the platform and say we want jesus We want Jesus. We want Jesus. Can you shout a hallelujah? We want Jesus. Can I say this with joy? I'm looking at some of the great 
men and women of God are going to be part of the next biggest move of the Holy Spirit. If you can identify yourself with that, your one commission is turn people from dead gods to the living God. Come on. If you believe that's a mandate on your life, make a noise in the house of God of joy. Hey! Hallelujah! 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 Number five. Number five. This is what we were discussing this morning, Pastor. Can I say this? It's very significant. This is what I spoke today to Pastor Elias. You will produce an echo that will be heard in nations. Verse number eight. From you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. The word sounded out in Greek is exikitai, which is only found once in the New Testament. It translates as the word of God rang out of you. You became the sounding board. So what I'm trying to say, your art ministry is going to become the sounding board from which the word of God will go to other nations. There's going to be a powerful media ministry. Powerful television ministry. Powerful ministry of spreading the gospel. Can somebody receive this on a personal level? You will be the soundboard of the word of God. Hey. Come on. Come on. Pastor Moni, can I do a demonstration? You know, soundboard in the Greek word is, can you come here? God's word will hit you. So have you heard echo? Okay. Moni. 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 That's echo. And this time, the word of God will hit you. But this time, that word that hit you will become echo in Africa. Anybody want that anointing? Can you make yourself known in the house of the Lord? Oh, somebody said, that's my life. That's my life. That's who I am. That's what God has called me. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God will hit you and the echo will be heard in other parts of the world. If somebody wants an anointing, can you do something that is out of the box right now? Do something. Do something right now. You will become a soundboard, soundboard, soundboard. Hey, hey, come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. God will speak one word to you and that will become an echo. Seven times, ten times, hundred times, it's going to be multiplied. And in the nations of the world, 2020 for Tammy will be for the spreading of the word of God. Can somebody shout a Hallelujah. Are you a soundboard? Come on. Some people are soundboard of gossip. You are going to become the soundboard of the word of God. Hey, can I see some soundboards here? Oh, you didn't hear me. Can I see some soundboards here? That means God will hit his word and that word will touch nations. We'll be, we'll be going to other countries. Can somebody shout a Hallelujah. Last month, the Lord touched you. And I'm glad to see you today. But this time, God has a different mandate for you. Can you become a soundboard? That means whatever God does in you, it will spread. Not bad reports. What God is doing. Come on, can you become a soundboard of healing? You will get a word and let go. If you want that, you to become a soundboard. Pastor, can I declare Tammy a soundboard of the word of God? We are the soundboard. We are the soundboard. Soundboard of the word of God. The word that came to you started to jump out of you. It started to echo out of you to nations of the world. If you believe that, can you make a sound of a soundboard in the name of 
of Jesus. Oh, At least tell two people. Tell two people. You will be a soundboard of the word of God. Sound. Hey. Can you declare this? Can I say this? Sometimes it will be in your bedroom that God will speak to you. But that sound will be heard in France. That sound will be heard in Europe. That sound will be heard in Pakistan. That sound will be heard in Africa. That sound will be heard in India. This church is going to become a soundboard. Can I hear some sound in the house? Hey, 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 shout a hallelujah. Hey, did you get the five blessing? Come on, can you spread this out here? Prophet Bernard is doing that. If we can, if we can imitate him, we can, you know, follow him. Tell somebody, I am a soundboard, huh? I'm a soundboard. God is looking for some soundboard. God is looking for some soundboard. He will speak one word and that will go to other nations. Can you receive it in the name of Jesus? This is a new entrance. This is a new entrance. Pastor, what we heard, what we were able to see in many, many years, it's going to happen in few days because God is going to make our church a soundboard in the name of hey. Hallelujah! 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 I'm going to declare some soundboards here. Give me a hug. The next generation is rising up as a soundboard of heaven. Can you shout a hallelujah? Do you want to be a soundboard? God has to speak one word, but it will sound in other countries. Can you receive it in the name of Jesus? As I'm releasing it because it's a personal word for me. I've walked with this for years, maybe two years. Cried before God. Can you at least stretch your hand towards me and say, we release it on you as well, Pastor. <laughs> Soundboard of heaven. Hey. Some of you when you're sleeping You'll keep on hearing the sound You're the soundboard You're the soundboard You're the soundboard I just have to speak to you And the word will echo Into nations of the world Into many parts of the world Receive it in the name Of Jesus Child Child you will be a soundboard You will stand in crusades You will stand on platforms you will worship and you will preach in the name of Jesus. Sound boards of heaven are now being released. I used to declare what we preach in Edmonton will sound in other countries. But I'm declaring that over Sharjah right now. Whatever is preached here will reach other countries. Can you shout a hallelujah? This is a unique entrance of your life. How many of you know there's a unique entrance? Those of you standing remain standing because I take only five minutes. I don't have time to preach. Five minutes, five minutes. Can you read the manner of entrance? We are not, I, I, I just spoke about the blessing of entrance, but the manner of entrance. What is the specialty of this entrance? Do you want to know that? Can I take five minutes? Five minutes? That's okay. Five minutes. Specialty of this entrance. 
how did we enter in, enter into you first Thessalonians 1 5 with this I, I, I'm not completing my preaching but that's okay 1 5 for a gospel came not to you not unto you in word only you say it you say it. and Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This entrance, mark my word, it's a prophetic word. This entrance, few things are going to come with you. Number one, the Holy Spirit is going to be a companion. You have experienced the Holy Spirit in the past, but this time, wherever you go, the Holy Spirit is going to join you. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? Oh, hallelujah! I can sense an anointing when I'm saying that. If you want to enter 2020 with the Holy Spirit, make a shout of praise in the house. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Now, are you ready for the next word? When you enter this time, huh, you're entering the demonic strongholds play is full of idols but you're entering with the power of God this manner of entrance will be with the power of God if you believe that I know there's limited space do even if you want to spin that's okay you know naturally by faith if you don't do that do it you will have the power of God going with you that means when you speak a word, there will be power. Can I get somebody to believe it? Hey, somebody says a word for my life. When you speak, there will be power. When you open your mouth, there will be power. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? There will be power. Now, but what I want to take two minutes upon is a word, much assurance. How many of you no, sometimes you can get a prophetic word from God and God can speak to you through dreams, signs and all that, but you still lack assurance. Assurance is not something that you make. You say a few things and you, you want to make belief. That's not assurance. I'm talking about supernatural assurance. And I've been praying before the Lord for many months because I've got hundreds of prophecy, but I want to feel the assurance that it is already done. I've been praying for that. You know, there were, you know, when I was, even now I get it. Even now, I remember I told you this story. I've got an auntie that came to me, brain tumor. I've been praying for church, has been praying. But the, that day, Sunday, when she came to me for prayer, I looked at her and said, No more, I'm going to pray for you. She got completely taken aback by that statement. She said, Why? Because I, I, the Lord to, I told her, The Lord told me, You're already healed. Yeah. Give thanks. That was an assurance of the Holy Ghost. And Tammy is going to enter a phase of assurance. Come on. You know that you know it's done. Come on. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? But this is not ordinary assurance. This is supernatural assurance. Can I say this? Some of you, when you enter your prayer room, you're entering with burden and with anxiety. But when you leave your prayer room, you're coming out with assurance. If you want the gift of assurance, make a noise in the house of the Lord. It hey! You may ask me, this is two minutes, okay? This is what I said. The two Greek words for assurance, two Greek words. And thankfully, there's one passage in the Bible where two words are put together. Two words. And the one is, it's found in Colossians 2, 2, 2, I believe. Colossians 2, 2 or 2, 4. Let's see. The two words for assurance in the Greek. Yeah. That their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love. You know, where Paul in Colossians, Ephesians, he says the word knit together. The body be knit together. The Greek word is assurance. Assurance means every part of your body agreeing together. There's no gap. 
nobody has ever told me you know some people have told me you know i am going forward but my hand is not agreeing with me or my kidney has a different opinion come on yeah. my brain is thinking different that means it is not assurance it's not compact the greek word is compact that's a greek word compact meaning there's no gap how many of you know there are billions of cells in your body enough with billions of nerves and everything working together in compact that's the word assurance that means you know that you know that you know god has done it yeah. come on somebody that anointing is going to fall on somebody in this new year if you want that can you make a noise in the house of a lord can hey. i am receiving it i am receiving it you know i've heard people say i know it in my bones god has done it you know can i declare to you if you want this just lift up your hand and receive it even before you see the evidence in the natural you will start celebrating you don't need to see the evidence you know that you know god has already done it come on if you want that anointing make a joyful sound in the house of the lord it is hey hallelujah hallelujah but the next word assurance is a word called full assurance you know what this word and the and the important things connect it came to me in a dream god is speaking to me in dream that's the word full assurance the word is pleroforo pleroforio pleroforo or pleroforo you know it means once you get that full assurance it's like a sail boat once it gets the wind it will it will sail by itself the wind will take it the word assurance full assurance means once you get that and you get that vision it's not you driving the vision the vision will drive so some of you are going to face some impossible situation but this assurance will take you that that full assurance meaning you don't even have to struggle you just have to stay the assurance will lift you like a boat you know sailing by wind and that's what it says in first peter when the olden times when the prophets not by the will but they were moved by the holy spirit the word is plerofero the holy spirit took them you will see a dead body you don't want to go but the assurance will take you come on how many of you want this two assurance you feel it inside of you no doubt and then the assurance will carry you if you want that make some sound in the house of the lord come on make some sound. the assurance but can i declare today 2020 it will be a beautiful entrance but the manner of entrance will be this with the holy spirit with power with much assurance can you say receive it hey pastor get ready some of your believers will come and tell you it's all done don't even have to pray i know it's done and they will start acting on it come on they will give proof of it do you want a supernatural lifestyle where you don't have to wait for the natural evidence you know it's already done come on can i get a shout of hallelujah